Alright, episode 16, Time Hogs. So three of us are traveling back in time to the time dimension. And looks like we're not alone. We got a parodic friend traveling along with us. Yahoo! I'm going back in time to go find the treasures and bring them back to the future. <laughs> and we're just passing by all the various portals with the, of, the, of various dates. But anyway, Sanchi starts a conversation. So the plan is, we get there five minutes or five minutes earlier. We wait in the sphere to stay undetected, and just after the crystal hits the younger Chris, I dash out and grab it and return to within the sphere. Not only creative, but okay. I mean, not totally creative, but okay. Hmm. Yes, I've often pondered and observed the idea of time travel, and the idea of changing the past for a better future, our, slash our present. After much pondering, I've realized that if we were meant to tamper with the past, it would only go unnoticed. As if the trip back was originally supposed to happen in the first place. Like if we went back to prevent the mishap at Guitar, I would still likely have to take the punishment anyway. It's so pointless. Hmm. Oh yeah, I get it, Pa. Like that, like that Roswell, New Mexico episode of Futurama. It turned out Fry was his own grandfather. Freaking messed up. Or in the Bender's Bid Score movie, with Fry ha trying to live his mess. Why is Miss Y2K life? He still had to end up back in the Y3K anyway. It was a good matching storyline, though. Yes, I agree. Although Megan Marie Griffin strikes me more fondly television wise. Yes. Hmm. Hey, I'm wondering why Magic Chan doesn't offer his input on, in the conversation. Does he have a can? Does he have a can on his tongue? You mean Cat's got his tongue? And anyway, he's concentrating on the strength of the sphere. It takes a lot. Of mental power to keep it sound for time travel. Uh, thank you for understanding, Chris. Oh yeah, I see. Anyway. <laughs> Stop. We've arrived. Oof. <coughs> oh, a little warning. Next time you use a precision, use a psychic precision, precision force, Magic Chan. Ugh. Jeez, that hurts. Mm. Anyway, we're at Manchester High School Gym, November 13th, 1996, 2.26 p.m. Hmm. And look at us. Older, the younger me is walking right by the uh, water me at this time. <laughs> I never did imagine the varsity basketball team in my freshman year. <laughs> Why an opportunity? Hey, Joe, what do you know? Oh, hey, Chris. Well, I've already filled the water balls for team, so I'm just chilling. The practice is over. Hmm. So we're just hanging out together, being like, you know, varsity basketball team manager buddies. Anyway, hmm. It looks sad, buddy. What's up? Well, I went out first day with my gal, Win Lindsay, last night. We had dinner at a good restaurant, but it turned wrong with spilled soup, tossed salad. It was a mess. She blames me for it. I let her ask her for a second date. She yelled at me to get lost and slammed the door in my face. I took a cold shower later that night, cried away. Oh, life sucks. Yikes. Well, there are a lot of cute girls here, like Laura B. Durazio, the cheerleaders there. Wow, she's so fine. She's gonna be mine. <laughs> hmm. But I'll chill with you, man. We stood together like three musketeers. You and Dewey and Louie. <laughs> Those silly ducks. Hey, Joe. I need more H2O here. I, J, K, L, M, N, Todd. I'll get that water for you. I'll talk to you later, man. Cool, Joe. I'll be reading Arl Stein here. Oh, my pom pom. Can somebody fetch it for me? <laughs> sure, Laura. I'll fetch it for you. Yeah, here you go. Oh, thank you, Chris. So during a few minutes, I st uh, the young me started reading the book and uh, imagining the locker scene by uh, the locker using Mighty Armadillo and our female character for the side the Hedgehog World. Hmm. Uh, yep. When I read the Goosebumps of Fear Street, correct the date. I feel each character wrote one with the with once in the worldwide world assigned to Hedgehog between the comic books, the video games, and where whatever. Hmm. Too bad Sonic and Stream was a lost cause there. Oh well. Look, you guys, the crystal's appearing. Mm, yeah, sometimes I would put myself in lead row before I was able to train my brain to visually remember what I looked like in the mirror. Oh, the crystal's appearing. Yeah, da 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 Happy birthday, Bionic the Hedgehog! Up, there goes our ball, Sonic! Up, there goes our ball, says the basketball player. But yet, that intercepts, that goes in through as Sonic, she grabs the crystal and heads back into the sphere. And then Yami's like, 
Who is that orange hedgehog? Hmm. Sachi comes back into his spear. Hands me the uh, crystal. Here, man. Take this. Don't stop me. I'm on a rollout. <sighs> and then we go back right forward into time. Meanwhile, back at the past day. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to dub you Bionic the Hedgehog. And I dubbed you to be Sonic the Hedgehog's long lost brother. I have the story in my head. I'm gonna get to my lo I'm gonna go to my locker, get some paper, a pen, and my markers, and draw this new hedgehog into existence. <laughs> now, who threw this basketball? Oh, sorry though, ma sorry though, dude. My bad. <laughs> Says by Mike the Hedgehog. And now for a fun parody. With apologies to Mr. Mike Judge. <laughs> and why not? Somebody left that locker open. <laughs> Check it out, bud. <laughs> Somebody left the locker open. <laughs> let's close it for him. <laughs> yeah, let's call it again. <laughs> okay, who wants to make love today? We do, we do, we do. Great. I'll take all the women here. 